Bering Sea, just over 400 nautical miles northeast of Dutch Harbor, Alaska, the Kulik is struggling in rising 17-foot seas and 35-knot winds. Tension is high aboard the vessel as the shipboard master's words reach shore. This length of tow, this time of year, guarantees an ass-kicking. But the vessel's owners deliver the bad news. I don't care how bad it is out there. Move that drilling rig or we gotta pay six million dollars in taxes. The crew on the Kulik and the tow ship Avic are not happy, but that's how Shell operates in deadliest crew. By the time Shell's Kulik was trying to outrun an Arctic winter storm and tax obligations in Alaskan waters, it was too late. Alarms were sounding on the bridge and the tow cable had broken. The Kulik was soon grounded on the rocks of Sitkaladek Island, Alaska. It seems that drilling in the Arctic was not as easy or safe as the skipper-in-chief had imagined. As we consider how to make the most of the emerging economic opportunities in the region, uh, we recognize that we must exercise responsible... Back on the tow ship Avic, the crew sensed that Shell's Arctic oil exploration may have been doomed from the start. The Kulik was far from the only disaster. Earlier in the season aboard the Arctic Challenger in calm waters off Puget Sound, Shell's containment dome was crushed like a beer can in a fair weather test. Meanwhile, back in Dutch Harbor, the crew of the 514-foot drill ship Noble Discoverer lost control of the vessel on their way to begin a summer of drilling. While leaving the Arctic, there was an explosion and engine fire aboard the Discoverer. Tension was high. From drill rig disasters and criminal investigations to impossible cleanup plans and an unforgiving Arctic. When deadliest crude is at stake, Shell won't stop on account of safety, seals, bears, or whales. Arctic smarctic, black gold and green profits, here we come. <laughs>